Here then the sad remains of my little EDF conversion, seen here flying in happier days. I thought it flew really well. Its demise then was entirely my fault, wasn't it, Graham? Trying to push it into manoeuvres it was certainly never intended to do, and on one tight loop at full throttle, uh, the, the wing decided to fold up, even snapping the carbon fibre that I'd put in there, and the thing hit the deck. There's no amount of you who pour that is going to uh, put this particular Humpty Dumpty back together again. There are parts which are salvageable. The EDF unit, I think, has survived okay. Speed controller is a bit beaten up, but uh, I think that still works. I'm going to have to wait until the Lidl's glider comes back into our local store and maybe rebuild it. Perhaps my inspiration for this EDF was the Volksjaga. Continuing on from that tenuous link then, maybe an ME262-like EDF conversion. Let's take a look now at the new glider that I'm going to convert. This then is the little chuck glider I'm going to convert. It's sold under various names on various sites, including AliExpress. As always, there'll be links down in the description. The first thing I like to do is to check the center of gravity with it as it is from the get-go. And I've made a mark here on the underside of the wing of where that point is. Given my experience with the Liddles glider, I think a carbon rod going all the way through, maybe around three millimeters uh, to strengthen that up. Unlike the painful experience of removing the canopy on the Liddles model, this one is, although it's a bit strong, uh, just a push fit. And in there you can see two ball bearings which are used just to, to balance it. That's going to be fairly easy to convert then. Also, unlike the Liddles glider, there are marks here to be able to cut out both the ailerons and the elevator there. I'm going to cut that such that it's all in one piece and make a cut out here for that to move up and down. The keen eyed of you will have noticed that the rudder comes in a neatly pre bent configuration in shipping. That's going to be straightened out with some maybe nearly boiling water or a hot air gun or something. The motors I've chosen then are these QX motor 30mm EDFs with a 7000 kV motor supplied. I've 3D printed in the same rather fetching yellow, a little, not exactly a nacelle holder for the EDF. I don't know where I'm going to put it. Should it be up the front there or halfway back? right out here on the wing or somewhere in between. I think the jury's out on that one at the moment. Having two EDFs means we're going to need two speed controllers. Now this conventional speed controller, 30 amp, is uh, way over the top. But tell me something, this is a nominally quadcopter ESC at 35 amps and it's less than half the size. How does that work? Anyway, that's what I'm going to be using, something like this. One of the downsides of the little guys is that it doesn't have any beck function. Therefore, I sourced this little beck, which may be a bit of overkill at 5 amps, just to drive the servos, receiver, and uh, maybe a gyro if I decide to put one in. This one even has the little LED on there, so I could even have a, a green and red for port and starboard. It would be rather sweet. Battery-wise, this is the pack I was using in the Liddles EDF, a graphene pack 3S 1300 milliampere. That may be a little bit too heavy for this project. An alternative that I have is this Tattoo 1050 milliampere hour. We'll have to see when it comes to working out the center of gravity. My receiver of choice these days is the Radiolink R8F. I like this especially because it has the telemetry function which enables you to monitor the flight pack voltage. This may be a little bit too large. Again, I do have some smaller alternatives. Continuing the theme of small, I've got these little Turnigy servos for the ailerons and there'll be something similar for the elevator. 
With all that waffling out of the way then, I'll go ahead now and put the carbon rod in for the main wing and try and straighten out the rudder. And then we'll continue with the installation of the other bits and pieces. I've made good progress then. You can see the carbon rod that I've put in. It happens to be this length because that's the length I happen to have in my stock. As you can see, I've gone ahead and glued the little EDF supports on just in front of the spar there, about halfway between this section here. Uh, no particularly scientific reason for that. I had a word with the guys at the club and that seemed to be the consensus. So that's where they are. The small BL Heli ESCs there, I guess one of the reasons that they're much smaller than the conventional fixed wing varieties is that they really need to be in the airflow. Normally they would be sitting underneath the propellers on a quadcopter. So that's what I've done there. A conventional arrangement here. I've made a little cutout for the servo. I didn't have enough space to go all the way through so there's a little bit sticking up there but not too bad. These cables, I don't like using the connectors so I shall solder on an extra piece of lead and run that in under the wing there. On reflection I didn't think that cutting the hole out of here would be a brilliant idea as it would obviously weaken it and it's in an area which is bound to get some impact. Therefore I've gone for the fairly conventional arrangement and just tied the two ele elevators together with a piece of piano wire there. Now I haven't fitted the servo in the back there because my idea is to use the servo to set the centre of gravity once I've got the rest of the bits and pieces in place. Another change to the scheduled programming is that I found I didn't have space to put this. Space is at a premium. Having hollowed out the section here at the front for the battery, it doesn't give me very much. I have uh, hollowed out under the wing as, as far back as about here, but I didn't want to hollow that out any further. What I did then was to take the wiring loom, which is for the telemetry function, and put it on a little 3 amp 5 volt regulator. The wires then go to the connector for the telemetry to the receiver. Looking at the receiver then, you can just see the single wire, just the signal wire. Ground is referenced through the power leads for the two motors. The two motors going to I think channel 3 and channel 4 I'm going to use. If I get carried away I shall maybe try setting up some form of differential thrust to give me a sort of rudder function there. But once I've got the aileron servos in place I can push that back inside. That will go back there under the wing out of the way and that will lie on top of the battery, leaving space to clip on the canopy there. Not quite sure how I'm going to fix that yet. Also, contrary to popular belief, I haven't lost my bearings. They're there. I'll get on now then and extend those aileron servo leads, get them inside, hook up the receiver, get that programmed into my transmitter. Once I'm happy with all that, I can work out where I'm going to balance the model. As I said right back at the beginning, the carbon rod is on the C of G, so it's quite easy for me to use that as a, as a reference point. Probably for the first flight at least, I will make it a slightly forward C of G, hopefully to control things rather better. I'll get on with that then, and we will reconvene later. Here we are then, uh, ready for the ALF. And I think she looks rather splendid. Well, she looks rather splendid now before the maiden flight. What she'll look like afterwards is anybody's guess. Under the hood then we have the 3-cell 1050 milliampere hour battery. Connect that up now. Our transmitter is on. That should be quite secure. It's held in by a peg at the front and some Velcro and even a, a magnet at the back there. We'll see if it actually stays in place. You can see my rather fetching navigation lights. Probably won't be able to see those in the daylight. 
I've routed the antenna out there, one to this side and one on this side at 90 degrees. A silly amount of throw on the control surfaces, but I do have rates set up on those. Last but not least, battery hasn't been charged yet, but it seems to be giving a reasonable amount of oomph. I will check the all up weight and then we shall go fly. See you at the field. <laughs>